All right, so we are continuing in our topic of being paid for Torah in Ramam Hilchosam Torah, Paragimel, Halach Yud. A uh, quick review slash refinement of yesterday. So we were trying to figure out yesterday the five things the Ramam says is bad. Uh, if you get a livelihood from tzedakah uh, in order to be involved in Torah and you don't do another job. So he says, Chil Hashem, Biza Esa Torah, so that's uh, desecrating the name of Hashem. We said basically that since the only way to know Hashem is through, well, not the only way, but the primary way that he gave us is through to- the Torah, then if you're taking the thing that God gave us that gives us Yidiyas Hashem and you're making it into just a thing you use as a means to support yourself, so then that's a degradation of, uh, of um, th- that is... Uh, making Hashem, knowledge of Hashem into a mundane thing, right? Like into a a trivial thing. And then we said, it's also a degradation to Torah because you're, and and that that is the same object, right? Meaning what you're actually doing is you're degrading Torah, but the fundamental consequence of that is that it's a trivialization of Hashem. So that's why he lists that first. But then you're also degrading Torah, which is making people respect it less and be not in awe of it, like he says at the end of Hilkos Sefer Torah. Then you're extinguishing the, the light of the religion, which we got from the Ramam saying at the end of Hilkos Shrita, that when you do a mitzvah in a degrading way, mitzvahs become degraded. And then he says the honor that we give to mitzvahs is not for the mitzvah, but it's for the one who commanded the mitzvah. And then he goes on and describes how the mitzvahs are a lamp that God gave us to straighten our paths and to provide light. We had a lot of that. We had a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. And it's not even Hanukkah yet. Um, and, uh, and so we said that that seems to have something to do with the influence of Judaism um, on the person. You know, uh, I feel like that, that really does tie into the initial possibility. Yeah, it, it's, it's entirely possible we'll go back there tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I did, by the way, right before here, I looked up all the places where the Ramam says das like that, you know, just um, uh, Dalatav. And I didn't see all of them because I had a hard time with the search engine in terms of the prefixes, uh, but I did not find a pattern. Okay. So just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes he talks about das as like religion. Sometimes it's like law. Sometimes it's procedure. I could not figure out what the implication is. Okay. Garm Rala Atmo. I think we also said. They all just do the same thing. They're, they don't seem to be the same thing. Like he, he refers to Judaism as the Das HaEmes. And he says, for example, uh, Navi can't make a new religion. But then he also says, for example, Hariyat Mekudesh you know, well, I guess you could say that's the same thing. He says, for example, on, on Yom Tov, um, when you are, you shouldn't eat and drink all day and you shouldn't learn, you know, all day. Kahi Hadas, but this is the Das and you do Chati Lashem, Chati Lachem. So that doesn't seem to be using, it's not, this is the religion, right? It could be, why not? Because religion is talking about the entire system, and he's saying this is the schedule for yeah, the day of Yom Tov. Ah, the beautiful Torah Torah. Run off and deliver it. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> no, I don't think it works. Um, okay. Or also, for example, we say that um, I think he uses it this way that we that um, about women uncovering their. Actually, no, does he use that or does the Gemara use that? I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, do we say what the evil he causes himself was? Well, I think one of the things I say that like I don't think we define what the evil like what that is exactly yeah we were saying that like it's a result of right all these things like that i mean it's clear that that oh yeah yeah, yeah. Me and so right like him internally in terms of the way that actually we did define in terms of the way that like he relates to his torah and his learning yeah and to the system of i think that is how we did it and yeah also externally the way that people but that's more that's the light of the religion yeah. thing right i think yeah we said that it's like if you are an artist or a creative individual right. and then you start getting paid for your job it's going to harm your actual like, you know, your actual craft yeah. or something like that, yeah. you know. Um, uh, so that was the last one we ended off on that we said that uh, the Ramam says if you make mezuzah into an amulet, then you lose your chaylik on olam haba because you're making it into something that is for the physical and not for the nefesh, you know, not for the, the soul. And similarly, if you use a pasuk in Torah or Tehillim to heal people, that is a... You're a kofir b'torah because the Torah words of Torah are a healing for the soul, not the body. So we said that you know you could you could expand the definition of kofir b'torah to include relating to Torah for something that is contrary to its essence. You know, like instead of relating to it as perfecting your soul, you're relating to it as just you know a charm. Mm-hmm. But then we, I think, at the end, last thing we said was we know that there are cases where Chazal use uh, olam haba as a deterrent which is different than 
using it to say that this is metaphysically what happens to your soul. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, if you deny God, you lose your Olam Haba. If you deny Torah and Shemayim, you lose Olam Haba. But if you make up a nickname for your friend and call him by it, you lose Olam Haba, meaning they said that to distance you from that activity, not because you actually lose your Chayel Olam Haba, you know? So we said that you, maybe you could say that that's what he means here. And we supported it by saying that he doesn't say, in lo chelak lo olam haba. You know, he says, natal chayav min ha olam haba. Your life is removed from olam haba. So maybe that indicates it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We also made a distinction between the five things that he's listing seem to be uh, categorically like um, referring to like the external negative that's going to happen, meaning like the way that people are going to relate to what you're doing yeah. or, or the system as a whole yeah. as you being like someone who's representing that. Yeah. And then Karam <coughs> is then it's switching thing, and then this is the internal. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Right. As a result of all these things. But yeah. It's like it's two different categories. There's the external reality right. and the internal reality. Good point. Good point. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think I don't want to spend more time on that, but I think there's still what to refine, but I think that was a, a good approach. I just want to say it again and see if it you know it's funny in this Brahman Bakius like oh you know uh, like looking at li like last year, starting when we start off and we review what we did the day before, one of two things happen. One of three things happen. Either we just do a, a concise review that kind of cleans up what we did yesterday, like just happened now, or we find one question that we need to uh, take up or the whole thing falls apart. Right. And that's why I think it was a good idea for us to like do a quick recap on what we did yesterday in case, you know, all three of those are good. It's just like, you don't know what's going to happen until you do it, you know? Okay, so now let's go on to the next paragraph, which we've read before, but we'll read again. Amru Chachamim, kol Torah, natal chayav min ha'olam. The Chachamim said, anyone who derives benefit from divrei Torah, his life is taken from the world. Now, our first question, or the question we asked the first time around was, it sounds like uh, he's basically saying the same thing that he did in the end of the previous paragraph, well, right? Not really, because the end of the previous paragraph is that you're going to be removed from Olam Haba. Now he's saying you're right. So that. right. So we we well he, right. We noted that last time that Olam here is unqualified, which could be Olam Hazeh, mm -hmm. and there he says Olam Haba. But I think we have another distinction now, which is who is he talking about in the first paragraph? He's talking about the guy who, or actually, no, maybe I'm not sure. You bring it up. The guy who. Mm -hmm. No. Who makes Torah a job? Now, in the second paragraph, who's he talking about? Yeah, who, who, drives benefit. who drives benefit from it? It's a much broader category. Much broader category, right? So, oh, three questions at the same time, right? So, what, what you said? What does it mean? Nehena yeah. Torah. All right, that one we have to discuss. So we'll, we will get to that. Yosef, what do you say? The first one is like the first thing we would from his to do. So you think the first thing he told you to work. Yeah. He's not right, but he's just like moving off on stuff. Uh, right. That's also interesting. That's an interesting point, right? He doesn't frame the first one as, I mean, he does at the end, but he frames it as getting livelihood from charity, not deriving benefit from Torah intrinsically. And he says, in other words, he, the guy is deriving benefit from Torah because he's saying, pay me tzedakah and I will learn Torah. And so like he's getting, he's basically getting a get out of job free card for like doing, for doing Torah. But um, but the like Orin was saying like the or like whatever whoever was saying oh like obviously saying the 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 Nehemi is much more all encompassing right. okay yeah Chaim what were you gonna say? Uh, you know, I just want to compare. I don't think we're thinking all Jewish people are Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Well, I mean, it is. See, well, here's the thing. He he is borrowing Chazal's lashon of like, for example, they say well, like. Out, right, correct. Yeah, but ju just to clarify, even even like in plain shot of the words, then um, Kol Chazal uh, say mitzvos lav lehanos nitnu. Mitzvos were not given for hana for for benefit. What was it? It is, but I'm saying that you could make the same argument there. Well, mitzvos are not for our Moshe Rabbeinu says latov lach, you know. So th th what they mean is for for benefit outside of their intended purpose, you know. Yeah, right. Right, right. Okay, yeah, that, that's true. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me let me uh, just restate what I'm saying here is that 
so, okay. When he says anyone who gets benefit from Torah, so obviously we're not referring to benefit in terms of the way that the mitzvahs reason they were given to us. Yeah, like, like living a good life, etc. But then Chaim is saying, furthermore, there are certain benefits that the Torah like uh, um, grants, like the privileges to Tamil Chaim of like getting honored, having people, um, you know, give them the first uh, merchandise, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that stuff. So it's, it's also excluding that. So now the question is what Hana falls within the scope, which is what Oren's question was. So the only answer that we've seen so far is from the Ramam and the Pirish of Mishnayos, which is all the examples he gave of like, you know, of money is the big one, right? But also like the Ruby Tarfon case, just to go over it again, was um, there was a guy whose grapes were being stolen and, uh, and they were being stolen throughout the whole grape season. And like at the end, he was like drying out his raisins and there are certain types of things that like you're allowed to take like little, like, you know, whatever mini raisins or whatever. So Rabbi Tarfin came along, took them because he was allowed to, because they were half care. And the guy was like, ah, this is the guy who's been stealing my grapes, pounced on him, threw him to a sack. And Rabbi Tarfin was a really, really rich guy. And Rabbi Tarfin said something like, woe unto this guy for what he's doing to Tarfin or something like that. And then, or woe unto Tarfin, right? Woe unto Tarfin. And the guy recognized who he was and just like dropped the sack and ran. And Ruby Tarfon said that for the rest of his life, he was um, aggrieved by this because, oh, the guy was gonna throw him into the river, right? And Ruby Tarfon was aggrieved by this because if the only way to save himself would be to reveal that he is the great Ruby Tarfon, then that would have been totally fine, mitzvah, right? But Ruby Tarfon was mad rich and he could have bribed the guy, not bribed that, he could have said, I'll give you a million dollars if you release this Tarfon. And he, he could have said that and the guy would have released him, but instead he invoked a name which brought up his honor right. and he derived benefit from, from his honor, you know? And that's the, um, that's like an example where it was not monetary benefit. It was like literally saving his life, but only because he could have done it in another way then he's chalking this up to like deriving benefit from Torah. That's, yeah, so that's extreme. Okay, Otsiv of Amru Lotasim Atarali he's got all him. this was from that same Mishnah of Natalchai of Minha Olam. No, from this Mishnah, Natalchai of Minha Olam. Um, don't make Torah a crown to glorify yourself with, Lokardam Lachwab him and not a shovel to dig with or an axe. Right. We did note it that the Ram in the Mishnah it says, don't make it a, a crown to glorify yourself with or an axe to chop with. And then it quoted Hillel and said, if you use the crown, you'll, you'll, uh, you should be killed. And then it said, and the Raman puts, uh, puts them in, out of order. And they also commanded and said, love work and hate being in the position of the rabbinate. Okay, then any mamalacha, any Torah that does not have work with it, sofa batela, in the end it will become idle, meaning the Torah will become idle, you won't learn. The sof Adam Zeh, and that guy in the end, she he molastes as a brio, you're gonna steal from people. So I thought that before we like try to figure out the Ramam as a whole, um, I remember that the Ramam is quoted from Pirkei Avos when he says, as Hova as a malacha. So I figured let's look at the Ramam's commentary on Pirkei Avos, because um, what better way to know what the Ramam holds than to look at what the Ramam says? Um, now, here's the thing. Uh, all right, so let me, I have to actually cover all that. I'm going to tell you how to get to the page. Um, so it's in the back. You have to find Avos because the page numbers start over for every Masechta. And what we're looking for, for starters, is that's what I'm about to say. Yeah. Uh, we are starting off with Aleph Yud, which in. Once you're in Avos, keyword, once you're in Avos, then it's gonna be on page, uh, it's on page Ra, Reish Ayin. Oh no, now we're cursed. Okay. Um, yeah, Kafek, you can see, does not hold by that because <laughs> he prints all of his books uh, with the, uh, the page numbers. Uh, what was it? Have you learned the Shulchan Aruch in anything that has any, in any Shulchan Aruch, I mean, it's not just, a yeah, and it's not, yeah, yeah. I mean, so they'll, what they'll do is they will change Reish Ayan to Ayan Reish, right? That's so confusing. I know it is. So it's the same Gematria, but like it's, uh, they don't want to say, they don't want to say Ra. And, but the, 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 the funny thing is to the links to which people will go for different words. Like what was the, what was the absurd example? I saw an absurd example recently. It was something that was like, I don't know, like, like, I don't know. People will do stuff like, uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I can't think of an example, but like, it was like a, it wasn't even like a really bad word. It was just like a negative connotation. Like, oh, we got to switch it around, you know? Yeah. It is borderline superstition, but it might be the, the category of superstition where, um, have you heard of that? The, okay. So side point, you know, but the Ram says, anytime you get to a form of the fundamentals, you have to talk about it a little bit. Right. So there's the Gemara's and Pesachim about Zugos, right? So Zugos were pears, not the fruit. The, the, yeah, P-A-I-R, like doublets, and people had superstitions around pairs of things, right? Like people here have superstitions. They have a triskidecophobia, fear of the number 13, right? That's why when you go, that's what's called triskidecophobia, which is if you look in elevators, they don't have 13 yeah, floors. Yeah. Yeah, it is, right, right, right. So, 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 you know, in, in, in America, it, it, it's that. Uh, or I don't know about America, Western world. So in the time of the Gemara, it was doing things in pairs. And people thought if you did things in pairs, then uh, it's bad luck, you know? So the problem is the Arbacosos, the four- What do you have twins? Yeah, Whoops, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, like any superstition, it's not consistent. And so like, I, I don't know what they held by that. So the problem was when the, when the Rabbanan set up the mitzvah of the four cups, which you do in pairs, you do two before the Suda and two after the Suda, they were afraid that people were going to um, uh, like, yeah, tweak it like by adding cups or taking them away or doing something so that they don't accidentally stumble upon like, uh, you know, this bad luck. So in the Gemara, Chazal give all these explanations for why you don't have to worry about it. So one is they say, Pesach is Lil Shimurim, it's a night that is protected. So you've got protection from God. Another one is it's a koshel mitzvah. So it's the mitzvah, the zakus of the mitzvah will protect you. And they give all these reasons. So the Meiri says, why do they need to give you these reasons? Why don't they just say it's 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 fake and it's dumb? And you know, so the Meiri says, let me just see if I if I have the source. Zugos. No, I just made a meme about it apparently, but uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, but um uh, we'll see what the meme is later. Um, uh, but the Meiri says that you see from here that if something is not full-fledged Avodah Zarah, like a halachic iser of Avodah Zarah, then Chazal did not just run and uproot it. You know, that they allowed the people to have these beliefs as long as they're not like Super stitches. <laughs> no, as long as they're not like, like, uh, you know, as long as they're not actually going through a vote. He uses a phrase like, like, if it's just like a shemitz of Odazara, like a, a tinge or like a whiff of a Odazara, then Chazal didn't go and obviously they held it was bad, but they didn't go and like uproot it from people. They did it in a more gentle way of like, um, of uh, like working within people's framework, but then like bringing them into the Torah's framework. Yeah. That's a two button. First off, why? Like, why do that? Why? Do yeah. Second, second question, which was like relating to that, which is like, isn't that usually how these things start? Like it starts with like just like a little whatever, yeah. and then it starts rolling. Like we yeah. don't stop it when it starts. That's a, okay. Trigger, yeah, it's hard to stop. It's a great question. Yeah. What's the vision of like? Uh, for example, like you, we, you can say about the direct world. Like, what do you call that? Well, if it's if it's actually demonstrable empirically or by whatever the standards of the science are, then that's then that's science. That's not superstition. Um, uh, that's actually, I, I mean, that's a halacha goes pretty far back uh, when they used to talk about um, amulets. You know, which uh, yeah, a rofe mumche. Again, amulets was like uh, yeah, right, right. So so um, what do you call it? That their definition of amulet was much broader. Like again, like the, the example I always give is. Uh, it's not for amulet, but for segula. Like, you know, the Rashba says a segula is a stone that attracts other stones. And who knows how it works, you know? So we know about magnets, but like back then they just didn't know about magnetism. So it looked like magical, but it was it was verifiable, you know? Or I've heard, I'm going to uh, pause this because I... So just to repeat your two questions, obviously the first one was... Um, why not? Well, you, uh, was that your second? Well, wow. Then what was your second question? I mean, they say, okay, right, right. So why not stop in the beginning, especially given the fact that they start off small and then they snowball, right? Like why yeah. Like, oh, well, let's, let's address this gently because it's not really a big deal. Right. I mean, that's how it becomes a big deal. Right. And even if it would become a big deal, who cares? It's like, right. It's not good. So, so allow yeah. So um, just to give an example to work with, first of all, and then try to answer this, um, example from, this is wrong with Bikyos, we could do some Bikyos here. Hills of Odazara. So again, the Torah has all of these Isurim de Arisa on, uh, that prohibit 
from the Torah superstitious activity, right? So let's just review them really quickly. In Hillel's Avodah Zarah, we read this uh, last year. Um, we have starting with, hold on, here. Shalola Nachesh, which means omen reading, right? Black cat crossed my path. I'm not going to go to work today. I found a four leaf clover. I'm going to buy a lottery ticket, okay? Shalola Lik. Like, like palm uh, so palm reading, I always think is Nihush because what you're doing is you are, are saying if you have this particular physical thing that happens to you or that you, you know, whatever, then, then you're making decisions based on that. The difference is that the Ram's examples of Nihush have to do with events like dropping your staff or like bread falls out of your mouth or a fox crosses your path. It's stepping on a crack. Stepping on a crack, right. Yeah, so I, I don't know for sure, but I would classify it as nihush based on my understanding. Uh, Shalolixom is to do is fortune telling, going into a trance and predicting the future. Shalola Onin, yeah. Was that very trance? Like, yeah. Using unproven uh, economic, like using un Verified economic models also that. So the way the Ramam defines it is he seems to hold that the trance is uh, is essential, you know, um, not other stuff. Uh, Shalol Onin is uh, lucky and unlucky times, uh, whether it's astrology or something else. Um, Shalol Lach Warchaver is, is incantations, is like magic spells. Is lucky or unlucky times? What about like, uh, is that like Fisher Bugs? Um, yeah, okay. yeah. So um, I, I I wrote an article. I could send you. Oh, actually, I didn't finish the article. I wrote two thirds of an article. Or I was sorry, I wrote. Was a. I have one half of a two part article or two thirds of a three part article called "The Month of Av: Unlucky or Just Misunderstood," and it deals with that question. Okay, right. so. Also, I mean, you can also like perms. Of that's it. the same Gemara. Yeah, and yeah. The nine days, the Omer. Right, same same Gemara. Omer. Yeah, yeah. So I, I deal with it there. I, I think I did answer it. Okay, but whatever. Um, so then incantations, uh, inquiring of the dead, um, consulting an ov or a eudoni, which are two specific forms of fortune telling, which we don't have nowadays. Uh, and then uh, uh, kishuf, which is um, doing like sorcery. Okay. So under Shalola Nachesh, the Ramam says, Shalola Nachesh, uh, oh, sorry, Nihush. Yeah. So he gives examples of um, that I gave before of like the, uh, you know, a, um, uh, what do you call, a uh, cat crossing your path or all this other stuff. And then he says like this, Misha Amar, Dira Zosha Banisi, Simintov Haisa Alai. Let's say you, you, you bought a new house or you built a new house and then you say, oh, this was a good sign. Okay, meaning like you say that, like, let's say like you started succeeding in business afterwards, okay? Isha Zosha Nasasi, Ubahima Zosha Kanisi, Muvurecha Saisa. So you get married and then you become blessed, or you buy an animal and you get blessed, and you say, Oh, this was a blessed animal or a blessed woman. Sorry, as soon as I got married, then I became rich. You know, so you say, you know, lucky, lucky wife, lucky life, right? I don't know. That's blessed. You mean like have circumstances happen that, yeah, that like he got, he got rich from the time I, yeah. Like no, 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 right. I, I, I got rich uh, when, I, when I got married. Okay, you might have heard people doing this. You ask a little kid, uh, what Pusk are you learning? Okay, a kid runs away because some creepy stranger is asking him about the Pusk. But I guess they would do this back then. Uh, if the kid would say a Pusk from the Brachos in the Torah, Yismach, then the guy gets happy. This is a good sign. All of these things mutter are permissible. Okay, right? Shocker, right? Why? Since you didn't direct your actions or refrain from acting on the basis of these things, you're making it into a sign for something in the past, then it's permissible. Now, unquestionably, the Raman would say it's stupid, like he says for all this other stuff, but it's permissible. So th this is an example of where, so we've got the Arbacosos and you've got this, where you you see that Chazal tolerated doing things that are not within the strict definitions of the Isser, like the strict definition of Nikush is something happens and you change your decision on that basis, you know, based on like this mystical thing. But if you already like, you know, uh, were successful and you just say in, in retrospect, you know, I, I, ever since I married her, then I got wealthy, you're not changing your actions based on that, you know? How is that what's happening with the Barcos? Oh, it's uh, it's it's not. This is just two other example, two examples of where 
um, or has all tolerated things which are ridiculous and bordering on superstition, but are not, um, uh, but are not full fledged, uh, you know, entirely usher. So you're going back to your question. I just want to get that example on the table. So your question is why don't because I'll nip it in the bud, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's a clever answer. Never heard of that one before. So what what uh what Chaim is saying is like this is um there is a strong taiva, right? Strong desire for a Vodazara, okay, which according to the Gemara was um uh, God modified that uh, uh, the, the type of Vodazara, um, and now it is uh, he took it and sealed it in a soundproof cauldron. That's what the Gemara says. Um, which uh, which I wrote another article on. That I can send you. This one's not on, on uh, online right now. Um, they didn't kill it. Sounds like it was a metaphor. I don't think yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a metaphor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they, they, they didn't, they didn't, uh, what do you call it? They didn't kill it, but they modified it, or the God modified it. And then that's the same Gemara where it says that, that God took the Yitzhar for Arayos, you know, which again, most of the Arayos are incest, right? There are a couple that are not like, like adultery. No, no, no. But what they, what they did was uh, what, so the Gemara says that the people asked God to get rid of it totally. Okay. So uh, he did. And they said, and there was not a single egg found in the in, in any of the chickens in the land, okay? Because apparently, uh, like you know, when God takes it away, He takes it away from all species. So the chickens weren't like you know making eggs. So then they said, okay, Hashem, give, uh, just just uh, turn down the volume by half. And the response they got back was, God, heaven does not grant a half. So what they did is they took the Yisur Hara for Arayos and they blinded its eyes. And the Gemara said, and that's why people are not aroused by their close relatives anymore. So. Your question about incest is still around. It's true, but you got to remember back then, incest was an active, conscious desire, a praiseworthy thing in many societies. Now it's in the category of abnormal psychology or like abuse or something like that. You know, it's not like people are just like clamoring after their siblings or something like that. So anyway, so what Chaim is saying is this Avodazar, the Yitzhar for Avodazar is still here in modified form, even though we don't go out and like sacrifice children to gods, right? And what Chaim is suggesting is Chazal saw that this Yitzhar for Avodah is still there, and this is how people are satisfying it. And if you just whack-a-mole to any manifestation of the Yitzhar for Avodah it's going to come out some way, and it's going to probably come out even worse. That's what happens, tends to happen if you like try to clamp down on expressions of instinctual, uh, powerful, you know, powerful instinctual needs. So they tolerated it. And then just framed it in the realm of halacha of oh you know the, you know you you can you know, you're still in line with halacha when you do it this way or like the 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 four cups yeah that's a good answer uh, just try to moderate it moderate it, exactly I was gonna give a, a, an answer in a different way um, I think they complement each other is like um, the same way that the Rambam explains that um, you know he holds that korbanos are not good. And uh, it, it you know it promotes avodah thinking. It was the actual way that avodah um, you know, over the avodah worshipped. So why does the Torah have korbanos? Because if God tried to just eliminate korbanos, people would not tolerate it because they would think that you're basically taking away the way of worshiping God, and then they would go off and do avodah So instead, God uh, preserved it in a limited form and then redirected it to to true ideas and and you know centralized it in the base of Mikdash, had Kohanim, et cetera. So I think that's the same thing I'm saying, but I'm approaching it from uh, just a different starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Thing that I really find it's a really fun fact. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this, but Rav Kook actually says because of that, or because of that and because of some other reasons that in third day of there won't be Kavana. Yeah. Oh. Right. I guess I don't, we won't need it. All I just wanted like how deals the fact that the yeah, right. Yeah, so I, I've heard people quote that Riff Cook many times. I've always asked, can someone show me like where he says it? Because I've always wanted to see it inside. If you ever find it, let me know. But the, the, the error is people try to say that the Rambam holds that. And the Rambam definitively says none of the mitzvahs will change. And he says we'll bring Corbanus in the time of Shiach. So so that, that could be Rav, her, uh, Rav Cook's shita, but uh yeah, Ram can't 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 shoot one that into the Rambam. Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. All right, so so similar trains of thought. Okay, yeah, yeah, same page.
Okay, so let's go back to our subject, which is hating the rabbinate. <laughs> okay, now, so uh, we got it here from Paige Reish Ayan, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, so oh, so that, that that's the thing, right? Is is there are going to be people who look at it and it says raw, and they're gonna skip the page or they're gonna tear it out, and because they're so fearful. So what do you do? Do you like, like you know, you just say like like tough luck, deal with it, like it's not superstitious. Good luck telling. Have you ever tried to tell someone who? Um, well, he did it with uh, things that are usser. So how did they get away with? Who, 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 wait, 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 sorry. Who's he? Rambam? Oh no, no, no. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. Okay, I mean, he he printed it. Well, the thing is that he, you know, he was. He, yeah, I, it's a question of how where you draw the line. You know, how much do you cater to the people? I guess he figures if he's printing books from about the Ramam who was openly says superstition is ridiculous then like you know if you're learning Ramam then you're yeah yeah you could say that or it could just be it wasn't the Minhag in in Yemen you know when they when they published the or in Yemenites when they did these things I was going to say though that um if you've ever tried to talk superstitious people out of their superstitions it doesn't work so since this is not it was not us to change it to Ayn Raish and whatever it just makes people less squeamish and uh, you know so that's why they do it okay full circle yeah Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on, just a second. Uh, oh, I, I might have said this last year. Uh, my my proudest moment of addressing someone who's superstitious was I was in an airport, and I had never heard of this until this moment happened. Uh, this woman. So I'm I'm at, you know, the you're in the line, and then you go up to the guy who checks your uh, your boarding pass and ID, and then leads you into the security thing. So I'm at that guy's like um, he's like I'm literally handing him my ID. This woman runs up, okay, which you know you shouldn't run up to a security guard, and, and she gives him money, and both of us are like, you know, so she says, "I heard it's superstitious to keep money that you found right before you're going to travel," okay, and I suddenly got inspiration, and I turned to her, and I said, "I heard it, I heard it." She was sorry, she said, I, "Did I say that right?" I heard it's bad luck to keep money. Sorry, the, uh, I heard it's bad luck to keep money uh, that you find right before you travel, and I turned to her, and I said. I heard it's bad luck to be superstitious. And she just like short circuited, you know, like, like, you know, but uh, yeah, so that was a, that was my little thing there. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're on uh, Pirkei Avos Mishnah Aleph, uh, Mish, oh, sorry, uh, Pirkei Aleph Mishnah Yud. Shemayev Avtalion Kibbalu Mehem. Okay. Shemayev and Avtalion received the Torah from whoever the people were before it, before them. And Shemayev Avtalion were Gerim, represent. Heavy marbe lachkoris edim. You should uh, interrogate the witnesses excessively. They, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. Shmaya of Tanya Kibbutzim. Shmaya Omer. Shmaya says, "Ehoves hamalacha, love work, usna es harabanos, and hate the rabbinate, the altis vada la rashus, and don't become too close to uh, politicians." Okay, uh, rashus is like government. Okay, so let's look at what the Rambam says. Now, uh, you are reading. What's your first word in the Rambam? Yeah. Rishos, yeah. And then Pashlato. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I, I, I don't trust the um, translation on the I'm going to use the same translation we're using, which we don't have actually on. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm, I'll explain on the screen, but I just, uh, I really like Kava better. Okay, so he says like this. Rishos is a shilton. That's the uh, the ruler. Okay. Um, uh, Okay, These three pieces of advice are have a good for the religion and olam hazeh. Okay. So how is he using hadas here? Uh, sounds like religion, but we'll have to see when he when he explains. Like, like, like Jews as a collective. I'm not sure. Well, let's see what he says. I haven't read this yet. Uh, I just had the inclination to look this up before uh, right before Shira. Lefisha beheder malacha. Because when a person is not working in the absence of malacha, yitzer lo, yitzer lo, uh, it uh, it causes a person suffering. The yigzul, the ava, and he will steal and commit injustice. Okay, uviradifas hasrara, and in chasing uh, positions of authority, which I guess he's learning. That's what rabbanus is. Okay, I said rabbanus is rabbinate. Rav literally means master. So I don't know if if he's extending it beyond the like official rabbinate. I assumed he meant rabbinate because. He brought it down in Hilgos Talmud Torah that we were learning, you know. But like, isn't he counting now on like the politicians? 
guess not the last point here. This, no, it sounds like he's going in order. It sounds like the first point was why should you love work? Because if you don't have work, then it's going to cause you pain and then you're going to end up stealing. Now he's going to Divas Asrara, chasing authority, meaning this is now explaining why you should hate authority or hate the rabbinate. Um, not hate authority like teenagers hate authority, you know, uh, hating to be in a position of authority. Okay, well, that was a long sentence. Um, when you chase positions of authority, then you'll face many trials. Okay, Nisnios here, I don't think he means like Avram's Akeda, trials, like, like difficult situations. Umatsavim kashim and harsh scenarios. Lafisha Makanim Bibine Adam, because you will arouse people's jealousy. Okay, you'll so make people. You do go into a yeah, if you, if, you, uh, if you go in, or he says even if you chase it, you know, but uh, yeah, if you go into positions of authority, people will become jealous. The Omid Neged Misnagdav, and people who oppose you will, will stand against you. Umafsi Dato, and ruin your, he uses Das again, ruin your religion. Yeah. I don't know what he means. Kumosh Amru, as it's, oh, okay, maybe he means literally religion. As it says, once a person becomes appointed to a position below, like a position of authority, Nase Rasha Milamala, he becomes an evildoer from above, meaning that so below, and above. below means in the human realm. Once you get a position of authority, then you become an enemy in terms of uh, God. Okay. The ha ha karos im ham. Yeah. That, that can't be like an absolute statement, though, because like, or, I mean, that like when you become a leader in this world, then you become like a Russia in that world. Right. It means that. It's like we obviously have good leaders. That right. Are Sadiq and, like, right. What he means, so what must he mean? He, he's talking about a, a bad leader, mm -hmm. I guess, or, or, or like a position of authority mm -hmm. where like you're, you're not leading the people for good. Um, um, you're you're, right. Well, that's one possibility. I'm not sure to say they killed the pre Malchus, which is uh, no government. Or like, I mean, like Shoftmir, just no government. I don't know. I think this is, if Shmai and Avtalion are saying this, then this is like <laughs> way after pre, uh, you know, uh, after pre Malchus. What do they think is the idea? Yeah. So uh, I think the, the, the answer is, I mean, the reason why I'm I, I'm not saying, I think it's not what you're saying it has to do with um, who Pirkei Avos is intended for. The Ramam's theory about who Pirkei Avos is intended for is someone who wants to become a chassid, which is someone who is like beyond the level of a tzaddik, you know? So we're not talking to people who are, you know, poised to become tyrants. We're talking to people who have, who keep halakha and are extremely good in Torah values, but then are offered positions of authority. So famous examples like the Abravanel was like the financial advisor to Ferdinand and Isabella, or Rav, um, Shmuel Hanagi was like the king of, 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 of Catalan, I think. What was that? Granada. Granada, yes, thank you. Granada, yeah. Uh, he was virtually, basically the king basically said like, okay, you can rule like and, and like do all the stuff. Uh, uh, Shmuel Hanagi, I think. Shmuel Hanagi. I I don't think he did much rabbinical, much rabbinical at all. I think he was just, I think he was just like so, a Jew who wrote the power of Granada, and then. I mean, he wrote the whole introduction to the Talmud that we have in every volume of of Brachos. You know, um, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he basically, yeah, it was. Uh, do you say Granada? Granada? Is this? Are we seeing Granada? Yeah. Yeah. He his relations to the Granada Royal Court and his eventual promotion to the position of vizier. Uh, happened in a coincidental manner. <laughs> Whoops. Um, Jacob's pulled from the, the shop he set up was near the palace of the vizier of Granada, Abu al Qasim ibn al Arif. The vizier met Shmuel, you got to say it confidently. Uh, the vizier met Shmuel ibn Nargila, uh, Nagrila, I didn't say it confidently, <laughs> when his maidservant began to ask Nagrila to write letters for her. Eventually, Nagrila was given the job of a tax collector, then a secretary, then finally an assistant vizier of the state to the Berber king, Habus al Muzaffar. And then he became, he succeeded his, his okay, whatever. Oh, you can read it on, on Wikipedia. <laughs> Interesting story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the point is, is he's talking about people like that, who were Tamid Chachamim, who are tempted to be in positions of power, probably for good reasons, like I could do some good stuff for the Jews. But what he's saying is you're going to be put into positions of, um, of temptation, you know, of, uh, of, of like people, you know, like whether it's bribery or making you work on Shabbos or, or like, give, remember, you got to remember the, the, um, the kings and rulers back then were so like typically like you know all 
all out in terms of Taiva. Like, look at Akashverosh. I mean, I know that was like way back then. But even these kings in Europe, like, there was nothing that said, "Oh, you're spending the people's money. You have to like exercise restraint." You know, um, you know these. So you could get caught up in the royal values. Um, whole interesting. I just want to finish reading the wrong one here. V'chein ha hakaros imamelech kashim od. Over familiarity with a king is very harsh. Lihinatam imeno to escape from or difficult to escape from baolam in the world. Vihi mafsida esadas and it ruins your religion again. Lafisha eno mabit ella lamash yakarvu ella shali. You're only going to pay attention to what makes you get closer to the king. Vata yodea inyan doeg. You know what happens to doeg haedomi presumably. Kozev kozev hamelach she's karvi lav mashiach harshem ubechir shem uvenavi. Even though the person who he got close to was the anointed of Hashem and the choice of Hashem and Anavi, I think. Yeah. So. Not saying this is absolutely saying this as advice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a good movie to uh, um, exemplify that, uh, the Last King of Scotland, uh, based on a true story about uh, Idi Amin. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Warren? Or ask? Uh, okay. Well, one thing that I just thought of is yeah. the original thing, but that seems weird for him to say, being the doctor. Yes. Of- yeah. <laughs> now this we this we don't have our question that we had about the how did he support himself through his brother because that. I think he did fall into, and it is hard to like get out of when the king says you're going to be my royal sultan, and when you've just escaped by the skin of your teeth from like the uh, the Muslims who are trying to kill you and your family, it is a very difficult situation, you know. So you're, it is a good good point though. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing though is that it's your 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 understanding, uh, rather than here to mean the ruler. Sounds like he's saying because he says uh, the way Kafa translates it is srara, which just means authority. And let me just see how uh, Ibn Tibon translates it. Uh, he also says Srar, yeah, authority. Not Davka, not specifically like the rabbinate, yeah. It feels a little strange though, because isn't that the, isn't that the next bit anyways? Like why would it, wouldn't it be um, repetitious? Or uh, the next bit? So the next bit is to not get close to politicians in, in the... The well, in the text, not getting close to politicians means the, the, um, the actual person who is the ruler like oh. the king or the vizier, you know, whereas hating the ra- the uh, uh, authority means hating to take on positions of authority okay. for yourself. Yeah. Okay. And they are different. Like when you're in positions of authority, you're going to face certain temptations, but when you are the king's like confidant, that's going to put you in difficult. In, 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 like he's going to demand stuff of you. And they're, they're not unrelated, but they're, they are different, you know. So with the, uh, trying to uh, become a CEO of a company, yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, unless he is still talking against um, people who use their Torah for positions of communal providence, pro- prominence, like, uh, like you know, being like a, uh, a Dayan of the whole city or like a, a um, the Rav of Ashul or something like that. But yeah, I mean, in in in, in Alvos, it's definitely um, broader than uh, than what the Ram was talking about in the Mishnah Torah. Okay, let's do the next one. Well, does it, yeah, it doesn't have to be that he that he is under in the Mishnah Torah or the thing we we're reading before, where he's describing it. it. Doesn't have to be that he means it as a leadership, just like in this pasuk. He could just be like, I don't know, almost like a tongue in cheek kind of thing. Maybe he want to do that. But in theory, like, yeah, sense, I, saying, like oh, haha, we have this pasuk which says hate the rabbit. And I'm going to use that literally, even though I understand that they thought of the most Okay, so th- this is a good mythological point, right? Is that with, 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 uh, and you, you can ask this about any, any of the Mepharshim, okay? Is to what extent do you assume, um, there's got to be a fancy literary term for this of like that, to what extent do you treat it that their whole corpus of work, like everything they've written, um, that is mutually referenceable? That was a really, really interesting way to say it. Oh, is it? Intertextuality. Yeah, intertextuality, but that's within one text, isn't it? No, no that's from text to text. Oh, it is? Okay, fine. So, okay, so now I learned what that means. Um, meaning like this. Let's say you look at um, Rashi on Gemara and Rashi on Chumash, you know? So, so the que- and let's say he's talking about the same thing and gives two completely separate uh, interpretations, okay? I am not familiar with people taking Rashi and saying, I have to unify them. Okay, like I unify Rashi and Gemara with Rashi and Chumash. All right. Whereas with Rambam, I think because the Rambam wrote on everything, you know, not everything, but like on so much. And I think because the Rambam was constantly revising his works uh, in light of each other, you know, then I, it seems like methodologically, there is an assumption that you can rely on intertextuality in the Rambam. Now, that does not mean that he 
can give different interpretations. Like maybe what you're saying is true is that in the Mishnah Torah, he's quoting the statement, but he's using it in a different way than the way he explains it in the Pirish of Mishnayos. But like I'm explaining my motion, like treating all of the Ramam's comments anywhere to be a comment of the Ramam on everything. You know, that's like why I'm inclined that way. Okay. Yeah, uh, but it's a good methodological point. Okay, next one is in Pirke Avos. Um, this one actually he quoted, uh, he doesn't quote, but it's, it's relevant. 113, same parak. So this is, um, oh, this is the one that he, oh, so the, he, okay. This is the one that's quoted in Hillel's name that we read later on. But he says here, This is the part. This is the part. One in your gimel at the top, yeah. One new gimel. Uh, maybe yours is not your gimel. Oh, sorry, yeah, maybe yours is not your gimel. Let's see. In ours. Oh, okay, so that's a different one. And yeah, the numbering is different. So this is actually going to be in right before your gimel. Okay. The, the, the three words before. One who uses the crown of Torah will be uh, cut off. So the Ramam here says, um, uh, you can't start at the beginning. Start. On the left column, wait. Yeah, left column. Mm -hmm. uh, fourth line down, second word from the end, the ode. Okay. okay, don't start there. That's not actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, behold, behold. Six lines down, last one line, behold. Behold, Hamish Tamish Bekesser, anyone who uses the crown Yovad will become destroyed. Klomar, what does this mean? Misha Ose Esa Torah Parnasa, someone who makes the Torah into a livelihood. Okay, that's our topic. Ding, ding, ding. Vizohi Kavanaso Badavar Zeh Kamoshi is Barbam Sakta Zao. Oh, so he just refers us to the comment we already read. Wah, wah. Uh, but let's see, read on. Vamru Baze Alder Hasimun Talmid Gabra Achrina. Achrana. Talmid Gabra Achrana? Oh. Yeah, see, look at the. This is weird. The, the one on that I'm using on all Torah says, Tell me in Gavra Achrina Lo. A student, yes. Another person, no. Klomar, meaning say, Asr Lo Lishtamish Betalmid Chachamim Eli Imkain Haya Talmido. So, okay, I see what this means. So it's Asr to use a Talmid Chacham for like some service unless he's your student. Why? What? That doesn't make any sense. Klomar, Asr Lo Lishtamish Betalmid Chachamim Eli Imkain Haya Talmido. Yeah, what does that even mean? Oh, okay. Okay. Let me say it reversed. It's also for a person to receive service from another Tamid Chacham, unless it's from his own Tamid. So like, let's say, for example, let's say like you're my student and let's say you're not. So... I am allowed to, and let's say you you offer to like pour my my water or something like that. I am allowed to receive a service from you because you're my Talmud and you're, uh, uh, yeah, and, and it's your mitzvah of, of Kavod Kachamin, mm -hmm. but I'm not allowed to receive it from you because then that would just be straight up me profiting off of my my uh, Torah reputation, right. you know? Yeah. Okay, so those are the Ramam statements uh, from his commentary on Pirkei Avos. Because the Ramam quotes those statements in Hegel's Talmud Torah, right? So going back to Talmud Torah, the Ramam said, um, love Malacha, hate Rabbanus. Uh, I could not find uh, him saying anything on this one. Uh, but he said that in the other one we read. He says that basically that um, you, will, uh, you should love work because if you don't have work, you're going to end up stealing from people. So our question is, what's the idea of this entire paragraph? <laughs> and, and can we get like a, you know, uh, insight in, into these other things as well? Because remember, the, the don't make it into a crown and don't make it into an axe. That was what the whole long Raman we did in the Pirish Mishnayos was. Yeah. It sounds like you're talking about the benefits of working. Right. Kind of. But it's fine because these are benefits, but I feel like a lot of them are also like, um, um, yeah, the cons not of not working. Right, right. Which kind of like mixes into the paragraph above. I, I know yesterday we said that the paragraph above was the effects and these are the causes, but I don't know if that holds up. For what? Meaning that, no, the, like, in other words, yeah, meaning, I don't know what we meant. What do we mean? Well, I don't know if it's good. 
Yeah. Right. First paragraph is consequences. Oh, and second paragraph is like the directives. Right. Right. Or right. Exactly. Or I want a crown. Like I want the kavod. You know. Or right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No, no, right. No, no, that, 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 that is what we meant yesterday, and that still works. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so the first paragraph is what happens if you make Torah into a job? Okay. And then the second paragraph is why would a person want to make Torah into a job? You know, and that's because he wants to make it a um a, a crown to glorify himself with. He wants to make it into a, a job. He uh does not love Malacha, he does love Rabanus, mm -hmm. you know. He doesn't want to work and have Torah, you know, uh, you know, have Torah at the same time. Hold on, did I forget one? I opened three tabs, but I don't know what this other tab was. Shemayim telling me we did. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He doesn't quote that one. That's why I'm not doing it. Yeah, all right, fine. Um, yeah. So do, wh how, wh what sense do we make of the first line? Kolonenem in Divrei Torah, Natal Chayav min Olam. So we said that it doesn't seem to be Olam Haba. That was the last one. What? Is it just saying that like you're going to become so... In Sounds like you're going to become so involved in it that it has bad effects on your life in Olam Hazah. Yeah. That's the general thing, right? Meaning that you uh, end up into these consequences that the Rama mentioned in the Pesha Mishnayos, that you end up stealing from people or like you know, being in pain because you're not supporting yourself and your family, you end up getting put into trials and like, it makes you compromise your religion. Um, you, uh, you get caught up in the world of Kavod, you know, and let that go to your head. Yeah. It's kind of ironic because he's saying that like, through um, deriving like, execute versus categorizing as improper benefits in Torah, it's gonna, it's gonna preclude you from being able to derive Proper benefit from Torah, yeah, like properly living, right? Like yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of tomorrow, I'm fine not doing Yud Aleph until we get there in Paragimel because Yud Aleph is not so. T I mean, he's basically saying the the it's good to get your own job, which yeah, is back, yeah. yeah. Let's come back. So I think what we should do tomorrow is go back to Parak Aleph where we were and continue on with that. Um, and I believe is that going to be the first halacha about learning Torah. Um, right. I mean, that's a good question. I hear it's not relevant, but he did make a big deal out of it in um in Hills of Odazara because that's what he was saying, like using a pasuk to uh, uh as a as a chant or an incantation. I mean, um, he said Divrei Torah here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Torah. Yeah. It's a good question. Oh, yep, that's true. Four words. Don't yeah, I don't know. I mean, the answer, the way that we're looking at it seems to be that uh, any benefit, but I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, I think that was a good uh, a good side related topic and we can go back to the Holocaust tomorrow. We got here. Because he was talking about uh, charging money for Torah Vaksav teaching and not for Torah Vaksav teaching. All righty.